Isle of Loronia. I have a personal question about you that speaks to the mind control thought processes of cult members. I realize this issue has come up again and again, but never ends like me still have difficulty truly understanding. When you left Scientology, did you try to talk to your then fiance about it? If so, did she straight up turn away and refuse to listen? It seems that with such a close relationship, each person would at least give serious attention to such an important matter. Did your immense distress and ultimate conviction have any impact on her? If anyone could get through to another person, it would probably be someone in a spousal type relationship. Thanks for all you've done and continue to do to alert the world about destructive cults and critical thinking. All right, well, let me tell you the specifics of this story so it's clear how this all went down. In 2013, I had this relationship with a woman out in Minnesota um, whose name I've not given out and I'm, not, I'm probably never going to because it's, you know, not really uh, anybody's business. Um, she and I were very, very close. I had actually gone out to Minnesota to be with her. She was a staff member at the, at the Twin Cities Church. And uh, so when I first went out there, nobody knew that we'd, you know, been together and, and were together. And, uh, and we were kind of keeping it on the down low. The church was giving me grief because I had just left the Sea Org and they were mad at me and they didn't want me going into the church. They didn't want me connected up with Scientologists in, in the Minnesota area. They thought I was a bad example and giving the Sea Org bad repute. And so I was persona non grata, which I didn't appreciate, neither did she. There's no policy anywhere in the church that we were aware of at the time that calls for treating me that way because I was still in good standing. I hadn't been declared a suppressive person. I had done all the right things, crossed, you know, signed all the right papers. I thought I was in, in good, and yet here I was you know, being treated like a second-class citizen for just being me and having gone to live in Minnesota. So that was very difficult and that was creating stress and strain. And that is actually one of the things that, that kind of drove me more to the internet was like, what is going on with this organization that it's doing this to me? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Well, I went down the rabbit hole of the internet, right? And I found out all about Scientology, but I was in a, in a bad position with her because she and her whole family were heavily involved in Scientology there in Twin Cities. So her family were, were the second or third or, or maybe first highest donor to the Twin Cities church. Uh, I mean, they were, they were absolutely full on drinking the Kool-Aid, right? So I had to be careful. I was learning all this, you know, very alarming information on the internet and I was myself going through tremendous mental problems and, and like, what, you know, and I was emotionally, I was a wreck. And, uh, and it was not a good time for me, but I was having to keep it all held down because I knew that she didn't know everything I knew, but she had a whole family who she was very close with. And if I just said, well, look at all of this. Well, she didn't want to look at any of that. She didn't want to know what was going on with Scientology. She was still very sold on the whole thing. And very, she'd grown up with it her whole life, just like I had. She had a uh, very vested interest in not wanting to rock the boat, not wanting to you know, learn about all the bad things of Scientology. It really upset her. When, there were, when I did drop some clues and some hints about some things, because I thought, okay, I'm going to have to go real slow here. I'm going to have to dish out little bits at a time, and I'm going to have to kind of get her very gradually on my side here. And that was sort of what my plan was. Unfortunately, at the same time, I was such a mess that I needed some outlet and so I went on the internet and anonymously was posting on X Scientology message board. And I was, ma I was making some comments here and there on, on Mike Rinder's blog and, and various places, Tony's blog, because I needed some kind of outlet to, to vent all of the anger and betrayal and frustration that I was feeling. Um, so I was kind of caught between these two things. I knew Scientology wasn't you know, the, the bomb, bomb diggity anymore. It wasn't the bomb.com, but I, and I knew I didn't want to do Scientology anymore. And yet I'm hooked up with a Scientology staff member and a whole family who are all hardcore. So my plan to gradually 
you know, kind of help her along to kind of come out of this situation was foiled by the Office of Special Affairs because they, I, I said too much online. I gave away too much about myself and they figured out who I was and they knew I was posting online. I didn't find out about this till later. Um, so she had to go to FLAG down in Clearwater to do training to do uh, for the Golden Age of Tech Phase 2. She had to go down there for a couple months and while she was down there, they knew that she knew me, that we were friends, and they told her, hey, you really can't be connected with this Chris Shelton guy because he's posting on the internet. And she was like, he's doing what? You know, because she didn't know that. I was anonymously, secretly doing it, right? Um, and I did not realize at that time, you know, in all that turmoil and mental gymnastics and everything that was going on with me, I didn't realize just how crazy OSA was about monitoring the internet. I had to learn that the hard way. Um, so I found out that they knew about me from her. And I was like, oh shit, I'm busted. So I had to admit to her that I had been doing that. She made me promise to stop, which I did. Um, and then I reached out to the church and I said, you know, look, we should talk. A couple people flew out from Los Angeles to talk to me, uh, a couple OSA people and they were gonna handle me, right? So I knew again that I was out, but I wanted to remain in good standing with the church in order to keep this relationship going. And I had kind of blown it by secretly doing stuff that I got busted for. And you know, my long plan now was gonna be even longer because now I was in all this trouble with the church for them having busted me. But I tried to cooperate. I said, okay, I won't post anymore on the internet. I'll be a good chicken. I will do exactly what you tell me to do. And I started doing the steps that they wanted me to do. This was November, this was October, November of 2013. She was down in Flag in Clearwater, so we weren't connected and they took her phone away from her after they found out that she and I had been having a relationship because then that all came out, right? So, uh, so she was in trouble, I was in trouble, and I did not talk to her for months because she they kept her down in Clearwater and through December. And in December is when I got a letter from her, from mailed from Clearwater saying, we're over, we're done. I don't want to see you anymore. We're not a couple anymore. You know, you lied to me, blah, blah, blah. And I was devastated because here I was trying to be in good standing, trying to cooperate with the church. Even after I'd gotten busted, I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a good boy. And they still enforced the disconnection. I was not a declared suppressive person at this point. I was in trouble, but I was not, they hadn't done anything publicly to tell other Scientologists that I was persona non grata, that I shouldn't be talk to, there was no issue about me, you know, like they issue those those goldenrod pieces of paper that say suppressive person declare Chris Shelton. Well, then none of that had happened. And so, so I was cooperating, but they disconnected me anyway. And that was the point where they lost me forever. Um, obviously, you know, that, that whole year had been pretty bad, but losing her was the worst. And um, that, that rocked me uh, really hard. Uh, so immediately, right, in my you know, devastated, uh, very, very angry position, I uh, emailed the OSA guys who had come out to handle me and I told them to you know, take the steps that they wanted me to do and basically shove them up their ass. Uh, and it, it, I was much more polite, but but that's what I basically said. And I said, I'm not, I'm not doing your steps anymore and, and, and you guys can, can bugger off. Uh, a week later, I got a phone call from the, one of the guys who'd come out to visit me. And he said, you're a declared dispressed person. And I said, I'm not surprised at all. And, uh, and that was that, right? And I hung up the phone and, and that was that. I tried, she did come back from flag. And I tried three times to see her in person, uh, to try to explain, to try to communicate, to try to like have some kind of resolution, to get closure, something. 
um, because we had not talked that entire time. She turned her back and walked away from me each time. She would not say a word to me, would not acknowledge my presence. Um, I, at, during the, the second time that I saw her, I apologized um, profusely, you know, let her know that, that I was, that I was uh, very, very upset with how things had gone, that I understood what was happening, but I, you know, I, I just felt really bad about it and I wanted to apologize. She sort of nodded that time and that was it, right? Um, each time there were other people around, it was a, it was a you know, awkward situation. And also I was you know, not wanting to get myself in trouble in terms of you know, stalking or something weird or anything like that. I didn't want to be that guy, right? Uh, so I, you know, I gave up. I was like, okay, well, it's very, very obvious. She does not want to talk to me. And so I'm done. And that was that. And then I had to deal with that, with that loss, you know, and, and that situation. And, uh, and it sucked, you know, it really, really sucked. Um, and I had a number of things that I had to sort of, uh, you know, go through to kind of get over that whole thing. And obviously by now I have done so. And I've, uh, you know, and I've got love in my life again and all is well. But in terms of my ability to talk to her, deal with her, that was exactly everything I just said. That's what happened. And, uh, I don't know that I've ever told that whole story uh, on video before, but now that's what it is. Uh, I think I talked about it in my book a bit, but um, uh, but maybe not in that much detail. But that's that's the story, and so my plan was foiled. Um, you know, the church would, of course, you know, lay the blame on me. Well, you shouldn't have been on the internet, and you were a bad person, and you're suppressive, and obviously Scientology never worked on you in the first place, is what they would say, and that's what they convinced her of. To convince her that you know that she should not have any discussion or any conversation with me of any kind, and had she done so, like I get it, she, had she done so, had she agreed to talk to me, she was under threat of losing her entire family. So you know they weren't screwing around with her, and uh, and when she got in trouble for all that, she learned her lesson that she is not to rock the boat or not to. Uh, you know, buck the system, and that's and the, and I'm sure, very very sure, that they made it clear to her that you know she would lose her family and her friends and everybody who mattered to her if she didn't get me out of her life. So, you know, when you when you're faced with a choice like that, obviously the boyfriend's gonna go, you know, and that's that's the decision that she made. So that's what happened.